just recently happened. I see a woman six weeks ago, she comes in and you can tell that she's like, this is not gonna work. My friends have told me I have to come. I really don't wanna be here is what she said. I've had a headache for one full year. Third treatment, she comes back. She goes, I haven't had a headache for seven days. Um, hi, my name is Shannon Chavla and I'm actually a licensed acupuncturist. I have been for over 20 years now. Um, my journey there definitely was unexpected. I didn't look like, you know, in high school go, oh, I'm going to be an acupuncturist because I didn't even know what that was when I was in high school. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but when I, um, I actually went on to get my degree in modern dance and from the University of Utah. And when I was there, um, I actually got a really bad injury. And, um, but I kept dancing and then I went on to get my master's in dance science. Um, and I wanted to maybe be a professor of teaching dance, but I was so fascinated by acupuncture from the injury that I had, um, because, uh, I actually got a fusion in my neck and I was having all these just, just intense numbness and pain post-surgery, um, that I, I kept going to acupuncture and, uh, I decided halfway through my master's that I was gonna become an acupuncturist. And so um, what was amazing was when I landed up there, you know, it was a whole new way of looking at the body. It's, a, it's its own medicine all in itself, right? Which is so fascinating about it. So we don't actually look at the body the same way a Western medicine doc looks at the body. We look at it completely differently on how we choose the points and the herbs and how to treat somebody. Um, so, you know, it's a four year program now and you have to have all of your undergraduate and you have to have, uh, you know, all your sciences and such to be able to do that. Um, but when I started after my first year, I just felt like, wow, this is, I've totally found my calling. I absolutely love this work. It is one of the fastest growing medicines in the country right? People, uh, it's just becoming so popular now because it works. And it works for so many reasons. Um, you know, the two things that I say to my patients, why it's so miraculous is that it decreases inflammation in the body. And what we all know is that when there's less inflammation in our body, then, you know, um, we have less pain, we have less issues with asthma, with numerous things. Um, and it really supports our parasympathetic nervous system, which is that rest and that digest and that relaxation part of our brain. Whereas the majority of us run around using our sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight and fight, flight, you know, response. Um, so it really helps the body completely relax and reduce inflammation. So uh, it really helps support numerous, numerous things. So my forte and my specialty right now is actually working with teenagers. So I treat a lot of teenagers from sports injuries to asthma, to allergies, to anxiety and depression, and just overall stress, you know, because all of you are working so hard and it just helps you, you know, chill out a bit. And then I also work a lot with counselors who send me people who have had a lot of trauma. So either physical or emotional trauma. So those are the two areas. So that's me. Was that good or did I, do you have any questions or? <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm wondering kind of I have, um, what kind of like your everyday um, job looks like, um, just like, you know, day in the life. Um, and then also how, like many times would like an average person like need acupuncture? Like, you know, is it like three, four, I, like? That's a great question, Grant. Um, okay, so a day in the life for me is, um, it's busy, right? So like tomorrow I have um, 16 patients. And so I, I have two rooms and I'm back to back. And so I start a patient, I do the interview, I put the points in and then I go to the next room. Um, so I, what, something I didn't tell you was that because I work a lot with kids, I've created this thing called needle free acupuncture, where I use these press points and I do like tuning forks and I do a lot of uh, what's called shoni shin. It comes from Japan. 
and all these other great things. So for kids that are like, I don't want a needle in me, I have a whole way of treating you that's going to still get us to the same place without having to put a needle in you. So, um, so either I'm working with kids or I'm working with adults. So I ask lots of questions. I do a full intake. I want to know what's going on. And then I go through and I figure out. So I'm going to throw out some ways that my brain looks at the body. Do they have spleen chi deficiency? Do they have liver yang rising? Do they have kidney um, yin deficiency? Like there, we have an entire way of, of diagnosing through the symptoms that you are telling me. And then I feel your pulses and I look at your tongue. And then that also guides me to my point selection. So I put the points in. Most people have the points in for 45 to 50 minutes, but I come back in and I usually take some out and put some other ones in. I do a little bit of body work and let people rest. Um, and then, you know, I work on my own in my own clinic. Many people will have, you know, other support, but for me, I go out and then I set them up for their next appointment. So I do a little front desk work. And then, so I'm like tomorrow, I'll be moving from nine to seven without stopping. So it's a busy day, but other days it's not like that. So, um, and in regards to your second question, uh, it depends upon why you're coming in. So if someone comes in and says, gosh, I've had back pain for 15 years, there's no way I can treat that in one treatment and have it stay. We really wanna shift patterns in the body. So I tell people that have a chronic situation, you need to give me six to eight treatments to really make it stick. You're gonna feel much better before that sixth treatment, but to really make a shift in your body, I need you to come back a little more regularly. Um, if someone's coming in for you know, stress relief, I'll say, hey, let's just do a couple of treatments. How are you feeling? And then maybe you come back for tune-ups every couple of weeks. So it really depends upon why someone's coming in. But in the beginning, once a week, regularly for three or four treatments, I think is essential for everyone. Because it, because it just helps our body get used to this new way of being. So. I have a question. Um, what was your career? Can you describe like what your training was like? Uh, or like, do you need a certification to be or in this field? Like, I'm just wondering about like the training wise, like how you got. So you have to have an undergraduate degree and you have to have um, your science classes. Um, you know, you have to do the chemistry, the anatomy, physiology. Um, and then it's actually considered a master's degree. And you can now get doctoral degrees in it. Um, when I graduated like 20 odd years ago, they didn't have that, but about 10 years ago, they started doing doctoral degrees, but so it's basically a master's in acupuncture and herbal medicine. And so it's a four year degree. Now it takes four years to get the degree, um, you know, after you've already done your undergraduate. So it's a fair amount of schooling, which is good because it's its own medicine on its own. And, you know, it's nice to see, you know, it's getting traction and, you know, how much more it's being respected all over because it's, it's working for people. Um, and yeah, and, you know, more insurance pays for it. The insurance doesn't pay very well, unfortunately. It's getting better, but, you know, we're, we're working on that, so. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for answering. Yeah, Absolutely. I, mean, um, I love what I do. I mean, bottom line is I feel really blessed that on a daily basis, I get up and I get to go do a job that I absolutely love. And so many love them, particularly working with teenagers. It's something that I really love because I want to have kids learn at a young age that self-care is what's going to get you through life. Because when I was young, I didn't learn that. And so the more that I think at younger ages that you guys get to learn how to take care of yourselves in so many ways, you're going to have a lot easier lives. So, um, I have kind of like a random question, um, but uh, I take Chinese and in Chinese class, I uh, learned about um, <clears throat> like traditional Chinese acu acupuncture. Um, do you know or like how, I don't know if you know anything about that, but like, I, I kind of learned a little bit about acupuncture, but 
do you do you or like what type of acu is there a specific type of acupuncture mm, that's a good question so there's actually different types i was trained in what's called traditional chinese medicine tcm oh really but yeah that's the one i was studying i practice japanese style acupuncture and i i have more affinity to the japanese style it's it's not uh, it's it's much gentler um the tcm is a little bit more heavy-handed and you know, but it's a good baseline. I learned a ton from it. We still use the same point selection between the Japanese and the TCM, but it just has a different way of looking at the body and the patterning of the body. Uh, we use a lot more what's called moxa, in, uh, which is this different, it's this, it's an herb that you burn and you kind of place it on the points or above the points instead of using a point. Um, and that's where the shonishin came in, which has been used for thousands of years on kids um, to help balance the body without putting a point in them. Um, but yes, there's lots of there's there's different types of of acupuncture, but it did start. It didn't actually start in China, but it got like that's where it grew and became, you know, really well known. And what's interesting, I suppose, was that you know, the, the ruler of China, Mao, you know, that doesn't have the greatest of reputations, um, but he actually solidified acupuncture because it was like all over the place, all over China and these villages and all these people that and he said, all right, we need to figure out who's doing what for which point and how it's going to work. So he actually solidified the medicine by making people get clearer on what they were doing. I thought that was interesting when I learned that in an acupuncture. Yeah, I did not learn that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I have two more questions, if that's all right. Um, yes. I'm interested kind of in like what the general success rate is, um, as well as like kind of how it can reduce stress so much. Sure. Um, success rate. In success rate, you mean in like, um, like if you come in for something, how well it helps? That, that, that ailment? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go with low back pain. So right now, Medicare has just for the first time said, great, we're going to pay for people who have Medicare, but only for low back pain, because we have seen how successful it has been. So what, what is happening is I think it's something like, and I can't be specific, so I'm not looking at it, but I bet it's about 85% of people who come in have some sort of relief for their back pain. But you have to remember like, why do they have back pain? Do they have like, are there discs that are gone? Do they have, you know, have they have fusions? Do they have lots of other issues happening in their body that affect the health, overall health of their body? So there is gonna be a percentage that it really does take the pain away, but there will always be a percentage where it just brings it down to a tolerable level and they're happy about that. So. In success rates, I think it just depends upon what people are coming in for. I wouldn't have such a, a busy practice, practice if it wasn't so successful, is what I see. People, oh, okay, I'm gonna tell this story because this was great. This just recently happened. I see a woman six weeks ago, she comes in and you can tell that she's like, this is not gonna work. My friends have told me I have to come. I really don't wanna be here, is what she said. I've had a headache for one full year, it has never stopped hurting because I had a concussion about two years ago. I finally got over the concussion and my headache won't go away. Can't get it to go away. And I was like, well, I'm gonna try my best, but you know, you're gonna have to give it some time. First treatment, as she comes back after, no change. I'm like, yeah, no worries. Third treatment, she comes back. I mean, I'm sorry, second treatment comes back, no change. Third treatment, she comes back. She goes, I haven't had a headache for seven days. I was like, you're kidding. <laughs> She's like, I don't even know what to do. She's like, this is impossible. I was certain this wasn't going to work. We are now at six weeks and she has not had a headache. How wonderful. Now, what I said was, great. You may go through a stressful time. You may have something happen in your hormonal shifting. You may have something happen digestively and your headache may come back. So you just need to come back in when that happens so we can get your body back to baseline. 
So those are, those are great stories. There are definitely people that come in and they go, yeah, this just doesn't work for me. There's definitely, it's a very small percentage of people, but it just doesn't work for them. So and that's okay. Was there another question? Sure, I had one more real quick and then we great. can move on to yeah. Dr. Stone if that's all right. Um, how does it like reduce stress um, so effectively? Right. Um, well, it does have to do with what I was saying before, with, which is how it really supports this whole parasympathetic nervous system response, right? So we have all these points in the ear. There's like over 300 of them. And then we have points that we use that just helps the whole body settle down. And it comes through this, this, this reduction of the sympathetic nervous system run in the show. And, um, it's hard to speak of it in a wet in the Western way, because again, you know, the way we see it is if someone comes in and they're having a lot of stress or they're having a headache, we have 10 different ways of diagnosing that. They're not the same. Someone could be having liver yang rising, whereas someone could have stomach yin deficiency or someone could have um, a spleen chishu. And that in itself is creating the stress. So I'm gonna use different points. I wanna support what we call the constitution of a per person. And the more I strengthen that constitution, the more settled they feel. But the other thing that acupuncture does is I call it forced relaxation because you're laying there for like an hour. I'm doing body work, you're listening to music. You're actually consciously telling your body you know, I want to feel better. I want to do this. So you've already started the healing process even before I've put a point in, right? I really think that's a big part of it as well. And most people come in and they talk about their feelings and how their week has been and something that's really frustrated them. So they're also like kind of emoting things. So I don't think it's one thing. I think there are layers. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I don't think there are any other questions. Um, I really appreciate it. Very interesting. Um, great. Really Fun to great. talk about. Thanks for inviting me.